Welcome to the video on evaluating functions. In this video, I'm going to go through five or six examples on uh, how to enter in values into functions. In this case, we have p of x is equal to 2x plus 2, and we're going to enter 10 in for x. So when 10 is equal to x, what happens and what do we get? So let's start. So p of 10, every time we see an x, I'm just going to put in the number 10. The x appears right here, so I just plug it in. And I evaluate, I just see what happens. 2 times 10 is 20. So our answer is 22. So on this graph, it would appear as the point 10, 22. Pretty simple. Number two. Number two, we have a bit of a more complicated equation or function here. We want to enter in negative 2 in for this time the variable t. So if we're entering negative 2 in, we want to be careful with that. Notice how I'm entering this in. I'm using parentheses. And every time that I see the letter T, I'm using these parentheses. And I emphasize that because of this negative out in front. This negative out in front needs to be there, sort of on the outside. It's, it's just like multiplying by negative 1. You have to keep it there. And it's important because this one has a negative on the inside as well, which is kind of interesting. So P of negative 2, we have negative, and then this thing, if you wanted to expand it, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, well, that's positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So I'll continue to use my parentheses, plus 5. Now negative 2 squared is positive 4, which is kind of cool. Now, I will caution you if you're using a calculator, and I hope that you don't have to use a calculator, but if you do, and you plug in negative 2 squared, uh, I think what's going to happen here, let me go to my calculator. Uh, let's go home and we plug in negative 2 squared on the TI-84, it gives you negative 4, which of course is false. There's just a syntax issue there. Be careful, your calculator needs to know that you mean to type in negative 2 times negative 2. In the first version, it thinks that you just want to square positive 2 and then negate the result. So be careful. Just use common sense there. Uh, let's see, we get... Oop, I'm using red here. We have negative, negative 8, which of course is positive 8 plus 20. So this answer is 28. P of negative 2 is 28. So that would yield a point on our graph, negative 2, comma, 28. We'd go 2 left and 28 units up. Cool. Number 3. We have an absolute value function here. W of n is equal to the absolute value of n minus 3 and then a minus 1 at the end. So let's evaluate that for negative 6. Every time we see an n this time, we're going to put in a negative 6 and see what we get. So inside an absolute value, we get negative 9. And absolute value is turns everything to a positive, so that's 9 minus 1, which is just 8. So in this case, our function w, when we plug in negative 6, we get 8. Moving on. Number four is, uh, looks like we have some sort of exponential function here, and we call the function g of x. We're going to evaluate it for negative one. So every time that we see a x value, in x, or an x variable rather, we plug in negative one. So you can see the little x right there, and I just plug in my little negative one. So two raised to, let's multiply these together, to the negative two power minus one. 2 raised to the negative 2 power. Hopefully you're pretty good on your exponential or your exponent rules. Anything raised to a negative power actually turns into, it turns that into, uh, it kind of goes to the bottom of a fraction and turns to a positive exponent. <clears throat> so this is 1 over 4. 2 squared is 4. Minus 1. So g of negative 1 is 1 fourth. <coughs> Take away 1. Well, Let's, let's change 1 into 4 over 4. So we get g of negative 1 is equal to 1 minus 4 
over 4. And that's our answer. Number 5. What happens when we plug a plug an expression an expression in for n? So we're just going to do a straight substitution again. This time it's a little bit more abstract. Every time we see an n, we're going to replace it with a y plus 1. So w of y plus 1, we're going to distribute here 2 into that binomial 2y plus 2 plus 2. So the answer to this is not as nice as the others, but it's 2y plus 4. These combine. Number six, last one here. This time we're going to replace the a with a minus three. Sort of abstract, but every time we see an a in our function, we're going to replace it and put in parentheses a minus three. Again, we're going to distribute this. Four goes into this and multiplies four a minus twelve plus three. So our answer here is 4a minus, what is that, 9. 4a minus 9. And we're done. All right, so that's all this video is all about, just evaluating functions for values. So as always, make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, hit me up with a comment, and I'll get back to you. Uh, thanks for watching. And in the next one, I think I'm going to go through some composite functions. We're also going to do some function operations and then some piecewise stuff, so thanks again.